नमस्कार स्वागत और अभिनंदन आप सभी का अखिल भारतीय शिक्षा समागम 2024 में राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति की चौथी वर्षगांठ के इस विशेष आयोजन में छह थेमेटिक सत्रों में से ये सत्र केंद्रित होगा एन और एन के सैलियंट फीचर्स और इम्प्लीमेंटेशन रोडमैप पर और इस रोडमैप पर बात करने के लिए हम सभी के बीच गणमान्य वक्ता उपस्थित हैं जिनका अपने अपने कार्य क्षेत्रों में व्यापक अनुभव दृष्टिकोण और इनके प्रयोगों इनके द्वारा किए जा रहे कार्यों में इनके प्रयोगों की सफलता की कहानियाँ हैं जिन्हें सभी सुनेंगे यहाँ पर आज और सभी प्रतिभागियों को आज हमारे वक्ताओं को वक्ताओं के अनुभवों को सुनने का अवसर मिलेगा साथ ही आप सभी सत्र के अंत में भी अपने सुझाव अपने विचार या अपने प्रश्न साझा कर सकेंगे मैं आज के सत्र के वक्ताओं को मंच पर आमंत्रित करते हुए आप सभी प्रतिभागियों से उनका परिचय भी कराना चाहूँगा हमारे साथ हैं दिनेश प्रसाद सकलानी सर डायरेक्टर एन मैं आग्रहपूर्वक मंच पर उनका स्वागत करता हूँ अभिनंदन करता हूँ हमारे साथ हैं श्री सुनील बजाज डायरेक्टर एस हरियाणा तालियों के साथ हमारे अतिथियों का स्वागत कीजिए हमारे साथ हैं प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा प्रोफेसर एन मैं रंजना अरोड़ा मैम का भी स्वागत करता हूं मंच पर श्री सुबीर शुक्ला प्रिंसिपल कोऑर्डिनेटर इग्नस पहल शुक्ला सर का भी स्वागत करते हैं आप सभी से आग्रह करूंगा कि तालियों से स्वागत कीजिए हमारे साथ हैं डॉक्टर ज्योति गुप्ता डायरेक्टर प्रिंसिपल के आर मंगलम वर्ल्ड स्कूल ग्रेटर कैलाश पार्ट टू डेली डॉक्टर ज्योति गुप्ता का अभिनंदन है मंच पर और हमारे साथ एक और वक्ता हैं चारू मैनी जो कि प्रिंसिपल डीएवी पब्लिक स्कूल गुरुग्राम से हैं चारू मैनी का भी मैं अभिनंदन करता हूं और आप सभी से आग्रह करता हूं कि तालियों के साथ स्वागत कीजिए और अब मैं आग्रह करूंगा संयुक्त सचिव श्रीमती प्राची पांडे से शिक्षा सचिव सर को प्लांटर और अंगवस्त्र देकर उन्हें सम्मानित करें धन्यवाद प्राची मैम और अब आपसे ही निवेदन है कि आप हमारे आज के मॉडरेटर और वक्ता दिनेश प्रसाद सकलानी डायरेक्टर एनसीईआरटी को अंग वस्त्र और पौधा देकर उनका स्वागत उनका अभिनंदन करें बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मैम आपका और अब निवेदन करना चाहूँगा अनुजैन ज्वाइंट डायरेक्टर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्कूल एजुकेशन एंड लिटरेसी से वो कि वो आए और श्री सुनील बजाज जी का स्वागत करें अंग वस्त्र और प्लांटर देकर धन्यवाद मैम और निवेदन है कि प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा को अंगवस्त्रम और प्लांटर देकर उनका अभिनंदन करें मिस्टर सुबीर शुक्ला मैं शंखा रायसर से निवेदन करना चाहूँगा कि वो हमारे अतिथि शुभीर शुक्ला सर का स्वागत करें प्लांटर और अंग वस्त्रम देकर धन्यवाद सर सर से निवेदन है कि हमारी वक्ता डॉक्टर ज्योति गुप्ता का भी आप अभिनंदन करें स्वागत करें
बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर आपका और मैं अनु जैन मैम से एक बार फिर से आग्रह करना चाहूँगा कि मंच पर आएँ और हमारी वक्ता चारू गुप्ता चारू नैनी मैम का अभिनंदन करें स्वागत करें बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका हमारे गणमान्य अतिथियों का स्वागत करने के लिए राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति 2020 एक मजबूत और उच्च गुणवत्ता वाले राष्ट्रीय पाठ्य की आवश्यकता पर जोर देती है ताकि ये सुनिश्चित हो कि सभी छात्रों के लिए सर्वोत्तम शिक्षा संभव हो चाहे वो किसी भी पृष्ठभूमि किसी भी क्षेत्र के हों एक उत्कृष्ट पाठ्यक्रम और अच्छे शिक्षा शास्त्र के माध्यम से कोई भी छात्र स्वयं का एक बेहतर वर्जन बेहतर संस्करण बना सकता है नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क एनसीएफ नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 के प्रमुख घटकों में से एक है जो एनईपी 2020 के उद्देश्यों सिद्धांतों और दृष्टिकोण को क्रियान्वित करने के लिए अग्रसर है इस कड़ी में हमने एनसीएफएफएस और एनसीएफएससी को तैयार कर लिया है सत्र को आगे बढ़ाते हुए मैं निवेदन करना चाहूंगा इस सत्र के मुख्य वक्ता और सत्र संचालक श्री दिनेश प्रसाद सकलानी सर का निदेशक एनसीआर है श्री दिनेश प्रसाद सकलानी ने इससे पहले प्राचीन भारतीय इतिहास संस्कृति और पुरातत्व में विशेषज्ञता के साथ एच एन बी गढ़वाल विश्वविद्यालय में इतिहास के प्रोफेसर के रूप में अपनी सेवाएं दी हैं सर इस सत्र का आरंभ करने के लिए आपका स्वागत है सभी को नमस्कार गुड आफ्टरनून सेक्रेटरी स्कूल एजुकेशन श्री संजय कुमार जी और पैनलिस्ट श्री वी हैव आई पैनलिस्ट इज द डॉक्टर कल्याण चक्रवर्ती कुड नॉट कम बट श्री सुबीर सुबीर शुक्ला प्रिंसिपल कोऑर्डिनेटर आईजीएनएस ग्रुप श्री सुनील बजाज एस डायरेक्टर हरियाणा डॉक्टर ज्योति गुप्ता डायरेक्टर प्रिंसिपल के आर मंगलम वर्ल्ड स्कूल प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा एंड वी हैव विद एस मिस चारू मैनी प्रिंसिपल डी ए वी पब्लिक स्कूल वी हैव हियर डिस्टिंगस्ड गैदरिंग ऑफिसर्स फ्रॉम द मिनिस्ट्री एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी विपिन कुमार जी ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरी प्राची पांडे जी अर्चना शुक्ला जी एंड प्रिंसिपल्स एंड फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स फ्रॉम एन सी आर टी ऑल दी स्टेक होल्डर्स हियर वी हैव दिस ग्रेट इवेंट टूडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग द फोर्थ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ national education policy 2020 and uh, prior to that we have been celebrating this shikshak saptah we have some other eminent people with us dr ramkishan rao ji or sri gobind ji and uh, other people who are interested in this service of education so this is great event as i was talking about the shikshak shikshak saptah so lot of events have been taken place and prior to that also we had different sessions today also so this session is very important as it speaks about the ncfs as we know that the process of developing the ncf has been very very uh, you know holistic itself and uh, inclusive as we know that the nep was formulated on the basis of the lot of feedbacks from the stakeholders lot of churning went into this and out of that we developed the ncf sc Uh, NCF FS foundational stage that was released on 20th October 2022, and based on that we developed the learning teaching material, uh, and play, uh, then we developed the uh, NCF for school education, which was dedicated uh, on uh, 23rd August 2023. So this session aims to comprehensively introduce the national curriculum framework for the foundational stage. and national curriculum framework for the curriculum framework for school education as envisioned by the national education policy 2020 this session will provide an opportunity for the participants to explore key features such as integration of cultural rootedness multilingualism indian knowledge system art education physical education and well being vocational education educational te technology 
into the school curriculum, innovative pedagogy, pedagogy, pedagogical approaches, holistic assessment, perspectives, equity and inclusion, and practical implementation strategies to transform the educational landscape. Uh, the, uh, the session will foster collaboration among educators, policy makers, and administrators to ensure effective adoption and execution of the new framework. So this will be the uh, mandate of this session. And we know that we have been given time. So we have to honor the time also. 10 minutes are uh, allocated to each panelist. For 10 minutes, they, uh, they will speak on their theme. And then after that, we'll have question and answer session also. 15 minutes have been dedicated to, uh, for that uh, question answer session also. So I am, I am also, I have been also given the responsibility of being key note speaker for this program. So this is my duty to take you through the journey of NCF formations, how the NCF came out of NEP. That is very important. We know that policy, policy document is a, uh, have the larger goals and larger big ideas but how to exactly bring them into the effectiveness that depends on the uh, national curriculum frameworks. National curriculum frameworks are the exactness from where we drive the learning teaching material, which has, has been uh, the, the national curriculum frameworks have been governed by the certain philosophical ideas and uh, uh, you know notions which have been taken into account while form formulating the national curriculum frameworks. As we know that, uh, that after NEP 2020, we have uh, 25 cross-cutting themes and they, uh, based on those uh, 25 cross-cutting themes, we formed the national focus groups and 25 nas uh, national position papers came out of those focus groups. And si simultaneously, the states were also given these themes and uh, overall, more than 600 uh, position papers from the states have been also received. And after that, taking into account the lot of feedbacks from the stakeholders. A lot of, you know, stakeholders were invited, feedbacks were taken, and we also launched a digital survey. And, and then we also had consultative meetings with the higher education authority universities, so that we must ensure the linkages between the higher education and the school education. Because uh, so far, the, we have been, we had been working in silos. School education was apart from the uh, college, uh, higher education. So this had been the tragedy of our education system. But now this policy ensures the linkages, not only between higher education and school education, but linkages across the themes, across the cross-cutting areas. So this integration is very important part. And out of that, then we developed the national curriculum framework for the uh, foundational stage. The, as we know, the structure of the education has been changed, school education has been changed. Now we have 5 plus, 3 plus, 3 plus, 4. The five years are very vital years. Those are dedicated to the foundational stage. And these years cater to the needs of the uh, students who are in the age group from 3 to 8. So what is new about that? We have to, although we have uh, put the, uh, the national cu curriculum framework for foundational states on uh, public domain, and uh, NCRT has also uh, uh, did lot of competency building programs, dissemination of the uh, this uh, foundational states curriculum frameworks has been done, and we have been approaching to the states and others for this purpose also, so that they may also know about th this, and then they take journey of this education system further because without the states we can't do anything so they, they are the real stakeholders and the purpose of these sessions is these such type of sessions is also the same that we need to reach out to everyone and they need to understand the what the national curriculum framework for foundational stages and what the national curriculum framework for school education is without understanding that we cannot develop any learning teaching material which can translate our uh, vision of our NEP 2020 on the ground and this is the golden opportunity where we have to work very hard and all together. So the NCF uh, for foundational stages is the first ever integrated curriculum framework for children. This is the first thing which we need to understand. It is an integrated framework and it is for the age as I uh, spoke earlier. It targets the age group 3 to 8 and it places play 
at the core of all the learning conceptual operational or uh, transactional approaches the, the play is the basic thing which we need to ensure that all all type of learning teaching material or activities whatever learning process is there that should be playful and we call it for twice pedagogy so this is very important and uh, the curriculum has been organized like that the pedagogy is also the same and the content organization and overall experience of the child must be joyful must be holistic must be ensuring the development of his five main cores those that is the physical development socio emotional uh, social emotional development this psycho motor development the ethical development the cultural development uh, such type of developments are important to doused without the holistic development kid cannot be a true learner joyful learner so that is the first and foremost aspect of this curriculum framework which provides joy and while developing teaching learning material we have to ensure that such type of pedagogy such type of learning teaching material have to be developed only then we will take the spirit of the nep 2020 in the real sense so that is the important task and for that we have to change our mindset so far we have been the different mindset mindset based on the rote learning process that mindset has to be changed and this is the very important task the framework provides a sequence of curricular goals it does not mean that if they are playing they don't have any learning process the curric curricular curricular goals are there every teaching learning material such as we uh, developed the jadu pitara and into that we put uh, 53 items and the very designing of the uh, jadu pitara so it does not mean that it is just for playing but understanding the psychology of the kids target group of that is how it ensures the competency how it ensures the learning process that well researched work material has been developed and that will ensure the learning process also so it is very important to make it clear to the parents and to the society and to the community that they should understand this message that their kids are not wasting the, their time in the schools but they are learning through the these different items and different type of learning and that will ensure the experiential learning also which has been the buzzword of the nep 2020 experiential learning is very important we cannot never forget whatever we learned through our experience learning while doing that is very important so while they play with the uh, different type of toys or puzzles or flash cards or story books they see the different type of pictures they try to adjust with the learning teaching material then they they have the uh, they have the inquisitive inquisitive nature they will ask the questions certainly then it is the role of the teachers and it is role of the parents to be with them and to satisfy their questions their queries that that is that is the learning teaching process uh, uh, pedagogy of this process so the framework is integrative and holistic giving equal status to all subjects and learning domains now when we move from uh, the bal batikas to grade 1 and grade 2 then we have subjects more subjects than the earlier so what what are the new subjects because we are giving importance equal importance to the art to the sports to the physical education as we give importance to the mathematics earlier we used to give math importance to mathematics and english only but now we are giving importance to physical education well being and yoga sports we are giving importance to uh, the art education and we are also bringing into uh, a new subject world around us earlier it used to be a different area but now we are bringing that from class 3 onward we are bringing that subject also so uh, these are few features of national curriculum framework for foundational stages then this framework is also very enjoyable as it has the examples illustrations it is just not only content but it has beautiful pictures and illustrations and from where we can understand that how this 
uh, is processing ahead. So this uh, way, this has been developed. National curriculum fr framework for foundational stage has been developed, and we have taken into uh, uh, we have taken into ground by developing the learning teaching material starting from the Jadu Pitara and then developing the uh, test books for class 1 and 2, grade 1 and 2. Then we talk about the national curriculum framework for school education. The national curriculum framework for school education serves as a broad guidelines for the entire educa school education. The NCF SE developed a follow up of, uh, it has been developed as a follow up of NEP 2020 and was released on 23rd August 23 as I spoke earlier. So what I will be able to pin, pinpointly give you the salient features, few salient features of the national curriculum framework for school education. This framework for school education brings to life the aims and commitment of national education policy 2020 and it is based on the vision of the NEP 2020 so that we may be able to implement the policy in letter and spirit. So the NCF SC 2023 addresses the group as uh, 8 to 18 years, from 8 to 18 years when the child moves in grade 3, from grade 3 to grade 12. So this is the target group and uh, the NCF SC 2023 is informed by informed by and fully responsive to the glorious unity and diversity of the country as has been the, uh, the spirit of the NEP 2020 culturally rooted and Bharat centric education. So knowing the country, knowing the culture, knowing the roots, roots is very important. Without knowing our roots, we cannot have any education system, purposeful education system. So that is also very important to understand while going ahead with the national curriculum framework for school education. I mean to say that when we develop the learning teaching material for grades from 3 to uh, 12th, then this has to be kept in, into mind. And then when we say this, then we say that all this is integrated. It means if you are teaching Hindi or English or mathematics, it does not mean that you are teaching only Hindi, English or mathematics. That is the basic thing. But through that, through examples, illustrations, different activities, you are going to open the broader horizon of the cultural panorama. Apni sanskriti ki jo adhubhut jhalak hai, virasat hai, usko aap kaise udharano ke dwara, chitro ke dwara kaise prasut karenge. Hamari kuch kitabhe nikli hai, aap logo ne dekhi hongi. Aapne dekha ho gai ki class 3 ki jo kitab hamari nikli hai, jaisi world around us ki baat mein pehle kar raha tha. World around us mein dekhi hai, kis prakar se humne envision kiya ki, First, kid has to know about herself or himself. हम पूरे दुनिया की बात बच्चे को बताते हैं, उसके बाताबरण के बारे में नहीं बताते, उसके समाज के बारे में नहीं बताते, परिवार के बारे में नहीं बताते, एथिक्स के बारे में नहीं बताते, बिलियुज के बारे में नहीं बताते। इस प्रकार की शिक्षा किस प्रकार के मानव को पैदा करती है, ये हम देख चुके अपने समाज की समझ रखें, अपने नेचर की समझ रखें, अपने प्रकृति की समझ रखें, और फिर उसके आधार पर हम फिर देखें कि किस प्रकार से हम एक स्वस्थ नागरिक का निर्माण कर सकते हैं। तो ये होलिस्टिक डेवलपमेंट इस तरह से एंसिवर किया गया है। तो हमारी जो पुस्तक हैं, जैसे मैं बता रहा था कि केवल विषय की बात, विषय तो कोर है, मगर विषय किस भाषा में पढ़ा रहे हैं हम और किस प्रकार से चित्रों के द्वारा दिखा रहे हैं, तो ये आप देख सकते हैं किताबों में, हमारी जो अभी निकल रही हैं किताबें और एक based pedagogy, competency focused pedagogy. It is going to empower you. Keval assessment ki baat ho rahi thi, question answer assessment ka ek bhoat purana tarika hai. Aap ne prashn puch liya, uska jawaab sahi likh diya, to aap keval us prashn ke uttar ko jante hai, apne aap ko nahi jante hai, ya desh ko nahi jante hai, ya samaj ko nahi jante hai. Abhi jo assessment, holistic assessment ki baat ho rahi thi, ye iska bada important issue hai. How to assess the holistically, means आप उसकी लर्निंग प्रोसेस के एवरी वर्चुअल हैज टू बी क्रेडिटाइज्ड एंड फ्रॉम दैट पार्ट देन वी आर डेवलपिंग द होलिस्टिक प्रोसेस कार्ड दैट इज आल्सो पार्ट ऑफ दिस एनसीएफ वी हैव टू कम आउट ऑफ दैट फॉर दैट वी ऑल हैव टू वर्क हार्ड सबको बहुत मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी उसके लिए 
अभी छोटे से कुछ प्रश्न पूछ करके इवेल्यूएशन हो जाता था रिजल्ट बन जाता था मगर अब 25 पेज का होलिस्टिक कार्ड जब आप देखेंगे तो बच्चे की हर ट्रेड्स को आपको देखना पड़ेगा कि किस बात से क्या सीख रहा है और क्या उसका रिस्पॉन्स हो रहा है तो उसको उसके लिए हम सबको मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी तो इसलिए इसमें घबराने की बात नहीं है मेरा पंद्रह मिनट है ठीक है तो इसलिए जो है आपको ये देखना पड़ेगा हम सबको इस मेहनत को तैयार करने के लिए इस मेहनत के लिए हमें तैयार होना पड़ेगा तो ये बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है जो करिकुलर गोल्स की बात है जो सारे एलिमेंट्स हैं चाहे ह्यूमन कैपेसिटीज हैं वैल्यूज हैं डिस्पोजिशंस हैं और जो भी जो भी इन, इनका उद्देश्य है ये क्या है स्कूल एजुकेशन को इस प्रकार से बनाना जो कि हमारे लिए हमारी एन के एम्स एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव्स को फुलफिल करे और एक होलिस्टिक सिटीजन्स का निर्माण कर सके वोकेशनल एजुकेशन को बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंस दिया गया पहले वोकेशनल एजुकेशन एक साइड लाइन था एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज में था नाउ इट हैज़ बीन ब्रॉट इनटू फोकस ए कोर सब्जेक्ट बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू हैव स्किलफुल सिटीजन्स फॉर द ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी दिस इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज विदाउट स्किलफुल सिटीजन्स वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू हैव अ डेवलप्ड नेशंस इफ वी वॉन्ट टू बी नॉलेज economy then we have to produce the knowledgeable citizens knowledgeable and skillful citizens so for that vocational education has given has been given uh, a, a special role here and it is now a core subject it is not a side subject similarly other subjects also physical education health and well being kitna bacche bimar ho jate hain depression mein chale jate hain problem mein aa jate hain अगर उसके बारे में उनकी हेल्थ के बारे में और उसके सब्जेक्ट में कुछ आता नहीं है स्कूल में पढ़ाया नहीं जाता अब ये विषय भी हमारा बहुत अच्छी तरह से आगे आ रहा है उससे रूटेडनेस भी आ रही है योग भी जुड़ रहा है तो बीमार नहीं पड़ेंगे स्वस्थ शरीर रहेगा तो स्वस्थ मन आएगा हेल्दी बॉडी हैज़ हेल्दी माइंड ये ये भी बात हम कर रहे हैं इसमें और इन सारे विषय पर आर्ट्स पे सब पे इक्वल इम्फेसिस दिया जा रहा है तो ये पूरा भारत केंद्रित है सांस्कृतिक रूप से समावेशित है 2005 के एन में ये सब चीज़ें नहीं थी वो केवल एक रोट लर्निंग सिस्टम पे आधारित था वोकेशनल एजुकेशन की बात की गई थी उसमें पर वो वोकेशनल एजुकेशन साइड में ही था कोई बहुत अच्छा उसमें इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं हुआ तो इसलिए आज के सेशन में जो मुख्य विषय आने चाहिए मेरी समझ से जिन पे हमें डिटेल में डिस्कसन करना चाहिए और डिलीवर करना चाहिए एक तो हमें इनोवेटिव पैडागोजिकल अप्रोचेज की बात करनी चाहिए बिकॉज विदाउट इनोवेटिव पैडागोजिकल अप्रोचेज we cannot change the learning process and we cannot change the mindset of the uh, stakeholders so that will be important then holistic statement uh, holistic assessment strategies which i have been speaking about that should also be the focus of this pan uh, panel discussion here and then we should have the inclusive practices to accommodate diverse learning needs and styles because learning by all learning for all is very important so that for that purpose also we need to address this issue here then utilizing technology uh, to enhance the teaching and learning experience without technology we cannot imagine nowadays so 21st century skills uh, are important and that for that technology is very important so ict uh, will be taken care while discussing on this, in this panel and also engaging parents and community as i spoke earlier that with those parents and community nothing can happen we are very small chunk but when we imagine of the kids with the, we we cannot imagine kids without parents and without society and without community we have to take all on boards and convince them that this how we are going to transform our education system we have to convince them then curriculum adaptation and localization contextualization is very important agar hum bharat ki baat karte hain to bharat to har jagah hai har jagah ki visheshtaye aani chahiye इसलिए एन बुक्स बनाता है मगर ये नहीं कहता है कि आप पूरी तरह से इस किताब को लगाइए उसमें उसको स्कोप है एडेप्टेशन का स्कोप है तो कंटेक्सलाइजेशन करना जरूरी है इसी प्रकार से मल्टीलिंगलिज्म बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है जिसपे कि हमने देखा कि कितने भाषाओं का 22 भाषाओं में अब हमारी पुस्तकें डिजिटल भी तैयार होंगी एन की और राज्यों को भी इस प्रकार का कोशिश करना चाहिए कि अपने राज्य की भाषाओं में भी बच्चों को पढ़ाएँ क्योंकि एक राज्य में भी कई भाषाएँ होती हैं अगर वो हम केवल एक भाषा को प्रमोट कर रहे हैं तो हम औरों को डिप्राइव करते हैं तो इसलिए मेहनत ज़्यादा करनी पड़ेगी इसमें भी और इसी प्रकार से आ, हमें देखना पड़ेगा कि जो वोकेशनल एजुकेशन है ये मिडिल स्टेज के बाद एक अलग सा सब्जेक्ट हो रहा है उससे पहले हम आ, उसको वर्ल्ड अराउंड इसमें बहुत ब्रीफ में उसका आइडिया दे रहे थे मगर सिक्स ऑनवर्ड्स 
इट इज़ गोइंग टू बी अर सेपरेट सब्जेक्ट्स तो इन इश्यूज़ पे हम बात करेंगे इस पैनल में और मुझे उम्मीद है कि जो भी डिस्कशन होगा जो भी चर्चा होगी आप सबके लिए बड़े फायदेमंद होगी और हम आपसे सुनना भी चाहेंगे क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन में तो इसी के साथ मैं अपनी बात समाप्त करता हूँ धन्यवाद एन 2020 में नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क की भूमिका को रेखांकित करने और सत्र को औपचारिक रूप से आरंभ करने के लिए सर आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और अब मैं आमंत्रित करूंगा जाने माने शिक्षाविद सुबीर शुक्ला जी को सुबीर शुक्ला जी शिक्षा की गुणवत्ता में सुधार के लिए पिछले तीन दशकों से काम कर रहे हैं उन्होंने आदिवासी क्षेत्रों में काम करना शुरू किया और बाद में राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर पाठ्यक्रम और पुस्तक विकास में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाई है वे राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति 2020 को तैयार करने में भी शामिल रहे और कई अंतर्राष्ट्रीय संगठनों के साथ भी काम किया उनके द्वारा लिखी गई कई बाल पुस्तकें काफी लोकप्रिय हैं सुबीर शुक्ला योजना आयोग के कार्य समूहों और एन तथा नीति आयोग की विशेषज्ञ सलाहकार समितियों के सदस्य के रूप में भी अपनी सेवाएं दी हैं सुबीर शुक्ला सर हमें बताएंगे एन और एन की कक्षाओं में प्रासंगिकता के बारे में तालियों के साथ हम सभी स्वागत करते हैं आपका सभी को नमस्ते रिस्पेक्टेड टीचर्स ऑफिशियल्स डिग्नेटरीज बच्चों के लिए एन वही होगा जो शिक्षक क्लास में करेगा हमारे दस्तावेज में जो भी लिखा हो तो इसलिए आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक अबाउट व्हाट विल एन लुक लाइक इन द क्लासरूम नॉट जस्ट इन द डॉक्यूमेंट Oh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but nevertheless, मैं इसके बारे में बात करता हूँ So, जो सबसे important बात है वो ये कि सीखने की जो प्रक्रिया है वो किस प्रकार की होगी अगर ये स्पष्ट नहीं है और प्रोफेसर साकलानी ने बहुत सही कहा कि एन सी एफ जीरो फाइव की जो सबसे बड़ी एक कमज़ोरी थी वो ये थी कि उन्होंने कंस्ट्रक्टिविज़म की बात की लेकिन एग्जैक्टली वो है क्या ये स्पष्ट नहीं हुआ यहाँ पर यह गलती नहीं होनी चाहिए तो जो उम्मीद है वो ये है कि हमारी क्लासेस में टीचर विल जेनरेट एज अप्रोप्रिएट एक्सपीरियंसेस कॉम्पिटेंसी ओरिएंटेड वंस चैलेंजिंग चैलेंज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है अगर उसमें चैलेंज नहीं है तो यू डोंट फील लाइक डूइंग एनी थिंग इट्स टू इजी और टू डिफिकल्ट यू डोंट डू इट सो जस्ट पिचिंग इट एट द राइट लेवल इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड मीनिंगफुल रेलिवेंट फॉलोड बाई एंड दिस इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट इट्स अ वेरी ओल्ड सेंग आप अनुभव से नहीं सीखते हैं आप अनुभव पर चिंतन करने से सीखते हैं एंड एक्सपीरियंसिस दैट इज नॉट रिफ्लेक्टेड अपॉन डज नॉट गेट कन्वर्टेड इन टू लर्निंग सो इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू क्रिएट दीज एक्सपीरियंसिस बट ऑल्सो रिफ्लेक्ट एंड देन यू लुक एट वेयर इट विल बी अप्लाइड एंड एंड दिस इज अ वेरी बेसिक फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ लर्निंग एंड ऑफ चाइल्ड डिवेलपमेंट दैट वेन लर्निंग इज नॉट कंसॉलिडेटेड फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम इट रिमेन्स लूज अनकलियर एंड इज लॉस्ट फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव स्टडीड चाइल्ड डिवेलपमेंट Piaget talks about how it is stored as schemas in our mind. If you do not form that schema, that learning is lost. That's why consolidation from time to time is extremely critical. So, in a foundational class, what will happen? For example, teacher will come in. He has already a teacher has worked a lot with concrete materials, with toys. And now the teacher says, uh, "This is the experience part." ऐसी चीजों का नाम बताओ जो आयताकार हैं या गोल हैं और जो आसपास देख सकते हो. For example, you can see right now uh, papers, caps, eyes, specs, mobile phones. So suddenly the class becomes alive and children start identifying क्या क्या दिख रहा है जो इस shapes के साथ है. Then the teacher says, now this is let's say class two. इनका नाम लिखने की कोशिश करो. अब मान लीजिए उनको पूरा नहीं भी लिखना आ रहा, लेकिन they have to try, work in pairs and try. But this is not the activity. now learning happens after this now the teacher says which names were you not able to write this is a reflection on it and the teacher might help them to write but now teacher extends it further you identified so many things can you take any two of them and put them in a sentence aapne kai cheeze dekhi jaise aapne dekha mobile phone 
आयताकार आपको लगा और आपने आँख को कहा कि गोल है तो मैं अपनी आँख से मोबाइल फ़ोन देख रहा हूँ बच्चे ने ये सेंटेंस बनाने की कोशिश की ट्राई दिस आउट विथ चिल्ड्रन एक्चुअली इट्स क्वाइट एन एक्साइटिंग थिंग एक बार जब शुरू होता है बच्चे उसको करने लगते हैं and then she says now try to write this for example the ball is on the table and then she consolidates by saying aaj humne kya kya kiya usme kya seekha pehle kya nahi kar pa rahe the ab kya kar pa rahe hain and how do we write about what we see around us this is a very ordinary simple example of what will happen in a literacy class where in a meaningful way children start applying their little limited ability to write to capture the world that is right around them start connecting with it in a slightly higher class let's say class 4 or 5 the activity is very different the teacher says one or the teacher either blindfolds herself or one child is blindfolded and some three or four chairs are laid and she charts out a course iske beech mein chalna hai now this child cannot see The whole class has to give instruction to this child. Daaye mudo, three kadam aage lo, baaye jao, ab left ko mo, hey, ruk jao, aage badho. Now you might think that there, what is there to it? There is nothing much in it. Try it out again. I will urge you. You will find that some instructions worked and some didn't work. Then she has a discussion. Now this is where the learning starts. Which of our instructions worked? Which didn't work? What happened when we gave contradictory instructions? Why did it happen? and what do we need to do better now children begin to understand how they have to work to make this happen then she says now we'll do it again and apply that learning right now and she concludes by asking what did we learn about how to communicate effectively i come to middle school class 7 let us say now here the teacher is asking under which conditions do plants grow best kaise pata karenge it's written in the book but is there a way to find out create your own experiment now here is a very important thing about experiential learning everything is not supposed to happen in one period it can take a long time it can be now done over several classes so she then encourages children to work in groups and find out their own way of identifying what are the different conditions that affect the growth of plants they set up in the school garden then she says which ways of conducting the experiment were more useful she might instruct them she might even suggest an improvement but simply telling the children dekho yahan par ek pauda lagao us pe light do fir light band kar do dekho it is only telling them bacche ke andar seekhne ki ek bhook hai wo bhook pura karne ke liye usko khud khana hai aap uski jagah kha lenge to aapne uska khana kha liya that is the reason why we have to let children do make mistakes learn find out on their own then she says which which helped you construct your experiment what helped you construct your example uh, experiment for example did you read did you ask did you fail what kind of data did you need to keep to arrive at any inference at all and what did these experiments tell you now that children have understood a little bit about experimentation and finding things out and this is a way to answer question she sets another one she says how will you find out about the impact of very specific conditions like say sunlight or soil quality on the growth of plants do more experiments and she concludes by saying what did we learn about factors influencing plant growth what would you advise farmers or gardeners go out and actually talk with them engage with the community learn from them what we did we learn about using experiments to find answers to questions there's not only one thing happening in this again professor saklani mentioned about integration and connection there's a lot of language learning here there's a lot of working in groups there's a lot of social emotional connection and bonding that is happening there's exploration of your environment there are the understanding your community you might understand about traditional farming methods that again is back to local knowledge coming in so there's a lot that happens in a process like this with a with an older class say in <coughs> secondary level and here i am not giving the reflection application and consolidation part of this that you can work out on your own but i would want to see something like this happening where the teacher says work in groups and keep minutes of meetings held in your local panchayat one one thing is that panchayats do need somebody to keep minutes for them if you interact with them you will find that they are always short of somebody who can keep 
records and students can play a meaningful role connect with the community and contribute to it but more importantly they learn a lot just by being there and recording things ask the panchayat members if you recorded things correctly then attend the next meeting keep taking minutes but then see what has happened between the last meeting and this one imagine if this is done oh, yes there is language there is social science there is also actively understanding or engaging with the community understanding developmental processes seeing it first hand and knowing what works what doesn't work what are the pressures and tensions that go on for a much higher class like class 11 i would say uh identify something you like doing see if you can make a business plan out of it a sustainable business plan and now i we define sustainability in many ways one that can keep continuing but also is environmentally sustainable integrating principles of entrepreneurship i assume that is something that we are teaching is part of the vocational aspects responsibility and community impact again when they do this it's not that they just stop here they try a bit of it they will fail it will not work then teacher will reflect what happened why didn't we work what do we need to read up who do we need to talk with find out more go on doing it and then once you have made it maybe you try 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 setting up some a small business do a role play go out in the community try it out and then at the end of the year this is a whole year long thing you decide whether it worked or it didn't work and what you can carry over from here into your life I hope this is making you feel a little worried. This is quite a far cry from what is currently happening in our schools, and you might even say, "What nonsense! This is it's not supposed to be like this." Okay, if it is not like this, but what else? It will. It, there will be many things which are approximating the kind of things that I just mentioned. Now, uh, some of these, especially in older classes, will take place over a longer period of time. Uh, students are active. Professor Saklani mentioned student-led as a very important word. That initiative, in many cases, will come from them. Teacher will provide support. In some places, when required, she may. And this is an important part. Suppose I start giving a lecture on my own about business plans. Students may not find it as interesting. But on the other hand, if they are trying to make one, and then I provide some input which really matters, they actually want to grasp it. So you have to create those conditions. one of the important things about play based learning is that it is not does not happen by telling children go and play jaake khelo se play based learning nahi hota how it happens is that you create deliberately a specific environment where children will engage with that environment with the for example you leave toys books things to explore things to make and you say you choose where you go but you have uh, by placing certain things in a careful intelligent strategic manner you have ensured that children will go through certain experiences which will lead to lead them to that kind of development and learning so that deliberation in creating the environment it is not only at the uh, foundational stage it is all the way up we have to constantly create the conditions where students want to engage want to learn want to find out more and and then we provide them the right required input suppose there is Uh, think of what is happening with all of us now there is no question in your mind but i start giving an answer to that question it is called spam how to get better insurance you never ask for it no so what do you do you delete what do children do when they get this kind of thing in class especially older children mentally delete aur jab online hota hai to fir to practically switch off that relevance has to be created and what i am sharing with you that create a challenging interesting relevant experience but then lead on to reflection and application and consolidate really makes a huge huge difference now uh, uh since my time is up what i am going to do i'll just take one minute uh this uh, uh presentation is available you can always look at it uh what teacher will do in the foundational stage derived from ncf in the primary stage in the middle stage secondary stage you can see now there are three big questions which should be in your mind and i am hoping that in the discussion time they will come up how can we prepare teachers to teach in this way in a regular school with no problems can it be done how will it be done it's a big when we talk of training teachers please note you are not talking of just providing skills you are talking of change 
शिक्षक वो व्यक्ति नहीं रहेगा जो पहले था अगर आप अलग से तरह का काम करने जा रहे हैं तो उसको अलग तरह का व्यक्ति ही होना पड़ेगा अलग तरह से बच्चों के साथ कनेक्ट करना पड़ेगा सीखने की प्रक्रिया के साथ 60 टू 70 परसेंट ऑफ आवर क्लासेस स्पेशली इन प्राइमरी एंड इवन एलिमेंट्री और मल्टी ग्रेड इन नेचर हाउ कैन इट बी डन देर एंड मल्टी एजुकेशन ये तो खैर है ही आई हैड अ होल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन मल्टी आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट इट राइट नाउ लेटर इफ देर इज स्कोप we will talk about multi grade education multilingual education as well so the point is we have every right to be ambitious uh, land pritchett famously said that developing countries are too ambitious about their children my response to that is that is not land pritchett's problem that is our problem we have a right to have dreams for our children we believe that we can do this i have shared with you something which actually has been done in several thousand schools already in india it is nothing very new it's very very possible we just have to put our minds to it from morning till now i think every speaker and every leader here has said that if we get together it can be done and i believe that too thank you dhanyawad sir apne vichar hamare pratibhagiyon aur vaktaon ke samaksh rakhne ke liye और अब मैं आमंत्रित करना चाहूँगा प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा को प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा एन फैकल्टी हैं प्रोफेसर अरोड़ा ने टीचर्स एजुकेशन और स्कूली शिक्षा में व्यापक अनुभव अर्जित किया है उनका काम मुख्य रूप से पाठ्यक्रम विकास शिक्षक प्रशिक्षण और शैक्षिक मूल्यांकन पर केंद्रित रहा है प्रोफेसर अरोड़ा ने एन में करिकुलम डिवीज़न के प्रमुख सहित विभिन्न भूमिकाओं में अपनी सेवाएँ दी हैं साथ ही नेशनल करिकुलम को तैयार करने में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाई है प्रोफेसर रंजना अरोड़ा मैम का मैं स्वागत करूंगा और आप सभी से कहूंगा कि तालियों के साथ मैम का अभिनंदन कीजिए और सुनेंगे हम उन्हें रिस्पेक्टेड सेक्रेटरी स्कूल एजुकेशन श्री संजय कुमार जी एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी श्री विपिन कुमार जी ज्वाइंट सेक्रेटरी प्राची जी अर्चना जी Uh, my esteemed panelists and all the esteemed gathering uh, sitting here so very uh, good afternoon to all of you namaskar so my uh, uh, theme for this presentation is vocational education uh, perspective and implementation uh, emerging from national education policy 2020 and national curriculum framework for school education 2023 so this is a very very brief presentation and there uh, the last picture is kaushal bodh this is our class 6th textbook uh, activity book rather activity book on vocational education so so i am not going to uh, uh, deliberate upon this slide because this has already been uh, set uh, only you can see that uh the second point when we see emphasis on holistic education for all including integration of vocational education art education physical education in all the stages of school education so just i want to focus on that policy as well as national curriculum framework are giving at most importance and emphasis to vocational education <coughs> Uh, this is very important diagram which we have in national curriculum framework for school education and one can see that how uh, this national curriculum framework uh, for school education is focusing on learning standards and it is very nicely elaborating uh, upon that how learning standards are coming out uh, from the vision of the society so vision of the society vision and purpose of education and then aims of education and then knowledge capacities values and disposition and then curricular areas so whatever curricular areas we are going to take those curricular areas are helping developing competencies and achieving curricular goals and vis-a-vis -vis curricular aims so this is very important and website on this is available on the website and you can go through this and then this is also very important for each and every teacher whether it is vocational education art education teacher science or social science because now this is competency based education era and we have to focus on competencies because then only we can move away from the rote memorization as a 
and as director ncrt has already uh, spoken so uh, you see curricular aims curricular goals competencies and learning outcomes very meticulously up to competencies this curricular framework is mapping all the competencies with the curricular goals across the stages and of course subject uh, areas so that these are very important because it is not only science mathematics or uh, uh, social science but it is for art education for physical education and of course for vocational education so now things are very much organized and we need to see how can we implement so with regard to vocational education if we uh, see so foundational stage and preparatory stage stage vocational pre vocational skill uh if you see uh, or read our document national curriculum framework every uh, in every page you will find the word skill so skilling has been given at most importance so pre vocational exposure is integrated at the foundational stage as well as preparatory stage if you'll see our foundational stage book the world around us you will find a uh, uh, exposure uh, or exposure to different work which children see around them and of course pottery uh, we have focused on pottery pottery on that so these kinds of things we need to see that how we have integrated vocational education from preparatory stage itself in the textbook so that is very important and middle stage one can see that vocational education again it has come Uh, at mid, at the middle stage we have nine subject areas and vocational education is one of them and at the secondary stage middle stage uh, uh, pattern will continue again uh, nine subject areas of the middle stage one more subject area that will come in uh, uh, individual uh, in society or we can say ethics in education so that will be uh, uh, an additional subject area and then if you see secondary stage uh, 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 next if you see now this is very important for all of you i know this is secondary stage phase 2 uh, 11th and 12th so now here are here we have groups so group 1 is language group where we have to select two subject a uh, two languages and then we have three more groups and it is written that students choose four subjects with an optional fifth subject from at least two of the following three groups and one can see group 2 art education physical education and vocational education again there is substantial emphasis on vocational education social science humanities uh, the the uh, group 3 social science humanities interdisciplinary areas uh, interdisciplinary areas uh, include commerce uh, commerce and then group 4 uh, science mathematics and computational thinking so it satisfies a uh, satisfies uh, children uh, uh, choices uh, whatever they want to uh, take up whether it is for uh, going to medical profession profession or engineering or otherwise uh, other higher education courses so this is also the school uh, stages logic and design one can see under vocational education lots of subject areas lots of skill courses are given specifically so now we are uh, uh, going to see time allocation because there may be these kinds of questions that what is the time allocation how many hours we have given to vocational education so even at the middle stage we have given uh, 110 uh, uh, hours uh, annually that teachers have to or schools have to implement uh, vocational education in this way so and moreover vocational education in uh, uh, in substantial amount have also been has also been integrated across mathematics science social science this is secondary stage that also 110 annual hours so now we have to see that what is the perspective of vocational education at the secondary stage what we want to see what is national curriculum framework is saying so one can see that students will be given exposure to six vocations this is the perspective we have yet not come out with this scheme that uh, that what it will how uh, uh, what shape it will take but this is the suggestions this is the recommendation of the uh, policy that children can choose uh, then focus will be on developing appropriate skills and hands on experiences 
six vocation which child will choose or student will choose at the uh, secondary stage phase one that will be the premises for uh, premise for uh, choosing one skill education course at the uh, secondary stage phase two so that is the perspective so and curriculum framework is very very uh, uh, particular about this that of course children will be given uh, on site exposure and it also uh, curriculum framework also uh, is aware of the current situation and it is clearly uh, mentions that it is not likely that all schools will have a trained teacher on for vocational courses hence though these vocational courses can also be taught by locally trained and experienced resource trainers so these kinds of things always uh, come uh, uh, in our mind that what will happen uh, from where teachers will come so there are uh, pragmatic solution uh, for that so uh, 11th and 12th choice based courses will be available and children have to have to study those courses in depth so that is the and those courses will be aligned with the national skill qualification uh, framework approach and objectives to vocational education this is uh, uh, this we need to see that uh, that what is what what are the objectives of vocational education why it is being focused so one can see now a broad and experiential introduction to different kinds of work to develop deep and defined set of practical competence work is an integral part of our life so whether it is ancient uh, time or this time so lots of work were available that time also and we are now we need to draw vocations from them not only uh, uh, not only aspirational vocational vocations but we have to also implement locally and contextualized vocations so these kinds of objectives this uh, policy uh, is given like uh, you can see this fifth objective to learn range of aspirational and local relevant and uh, relevant and contextual vocations and of course uh, then this policy is also uh, this uh, curriculum framework is also saying that children need to learn to value all types of work based on inherent dignity of all works so that is very important objective of this vocational education which we are going to implement uh, these are three work forms this national curriculum framework for school education is uh, recommending because now it will really smoothen the process of uh, uh, smooth the process of uh, implementing uh, vocational education when there are three work forms and every work from every work form child children has to be given or students have to be given exposure so we need to see that children need to work with life forms children need to work with materials and machine and children need to work in human services so all the three work forms we need to uh, uh, to give exposure to children in all these forms and that exactly we have done in our vocational education activity book for grade 6 so this this is just a definition what is this work form that presentation will be with you so and of course with the uh, term terminology itself you can this is self explanatory terminology work with life forms work with machines and materials uh, i'm just winding it up work in human services so this uh, curriculum framework also distinguishes vocational education and skill training because it is very very clear that vocational education is broader and it develops capacities whereas skill training uh, develop specific skills of course capacities always include lots of skills so that we need to understand and we will see we will need to we need to see that uh, this is kaushal both and one can see uh, part 1 part 2 part 3 3 this book is in three part part 1 work in life forms and two projects we are giving school kitchen garden biodiversity register then work with machine and material we are giving maker skills and animation and games so even ai integration is also there artificial intelligence and then work in human services project uh, uh, is on museum school museum and then cooking with without fire so Uh, so these are the projects so out Please, of the six projects Rajinali, children have to choose time only is over, time is yeah, only so way forward just we have to uh, 
uh, strengthen our linkage. NCRT has to strengthen its linkages with all the uh, concerned organization, whether it is NIUS, uh, NCVET, uh, um, and CBSC, because implementing vocational education needs uh, consensus and uh, uh, strengthening uh, or linkages with all these organization. Till middle stage, we have clear modality, so we are implementing it. For the secondary stage, we are still in discussion mode that what model of vocational education we are going to implement and very soon we will be uh, reaching to consensus and we will be coming out with vocational education book for class 9th as well so so thank you very much thank you professor ranjana for giving detailed view on importance of vocational education and uh, role of ncf for the same और अब मैं आमंत्रित करना चाहूँगा डॉक्टर ज्योति गुप्ता को जो राष्ट्रीय पुरस्कार विजेता और श्रीराम यूनिवर्सल स्कूल गाजियाबाद की संस्थापक निदेशक रही हैं तथा वर्तमान में के आर मंगलम वर्ल्ड स्कूल जी के पार्ट टू में निदेशक हैं एक प्रतिष्ठित शिक्षाविद डॉक्टर ज्योति गुप्ता ने अपने अनुकरणीय कार्यों से शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में एक प्रमुख स्थान हासिल किया है डॉक्टर ज्योति गुप्ता का तालियों के साथ स्वागत कीजिए Namaste, good afternoon. I'm thankful to Secretary Sir for giving me this opportunity for being here. Uh, it's actually an honor to be here. Uh, Honorable Secretary Sir, Vipin Sir, Prachi Ma'am, Avasti Ma'am, Director Sir. Much has been said about the NCFSC and at schools we've been working for almost a year now where we've uh, sat down with our teachers and we have read the NCFSC threadbare every page. We have revamped our um, lesson plans. We have revamped the way we are teaching our pedagogies, our assessment patterns, the way we are going to report the assessments that we are doing in the classrooms. So. The policy has been there, the document NCF has been there, in, in CFSC, uh, which also includes the foundational stage. And uh, we've been having a lot of advocacy programs from CBSC, from the NCRT, and a lot of capacity building programs for the principals have been happening since past uh, one year, almost one year. And uh, we've started the uh, session with a lot of uh, I would say enthusiasm. And I'm particularly excited uh, to be a principal at this point of time when there is so much of a change. So we have come a long way from saying that padhoge likhoge to banoge nawab, khelhoge kudoge to hoge kharab. From there to now where it is uh, studying and learning through sports, studying and learning through arts, sports, and art, performing arts, visual arts, has become the central function in the schools. And there is a lot of learning of the various subjects through projects and through the performing arts, through the visual arts, and through the sports. So we are really excited about it, how we are implementing it in the school, because a lot has been said about the policy. Though my presentation also included, I was supposed to focus on the part C, which talks about various subjects, including the foundational stage, as to how do we have to actually implement. And that is the question for the principals today. How do we take it to the classroom? How do we implement what is there in the policy? How does it become a part of our lesson plans? And how does the child who is there in the class gets the benefit of this document that is there? So that's what I'm going to showcase here. I'm going to uh, skip a couple of slides because that's going to be a repetition of what has already been said. So various domains that uh, have been mentioned in the NCFSC, that is the physical development, socio-emotional ethical development, cognitive development, aesthetic and cultural development, and the language and literacy development of the children. How do we actually talk, how do we 
map it up with the competencies that have been the curricular goals that have been given which are further divided into the competencies and then we have to actually uh, also uh, measure these because we are talking about competency based learning we are talking about the outcome based learning and whenever the question is of the outcome then it has to be measured and once it is measured it has to be reported onto the report cards also or the progress cards i mean not to say the report cards but the progress cards of the children so these are the various curricular goals and uh, already a lot has been said about that so how do we do it in our school we do it with the uh, help of the conversations and storytelling uh, object based learning and the toy based learning so uh, in the uh, we have developed the pedagogies where the children are using the uh, top lattu to learn the uh, uh, to learn the principles of physics and to learn the principles of mathematics kite flying which is actually used to again learn a lot of uh, concepts of physics uh, songs and rhymes for the children music and movement art and craft spending time in the nature and the field trips indoor games and outdoor games so we can see that there is experiential learning there is holistic development of the children it is integrated learning where a uh, lot of projects are there and children are learning various subjects through these it is inquiry driven we are not forcing the concepts on the children but children are actually coming with the background knowledge and they are building on that knowledge it is discovery oriented it is learner centered each and every child is important for us it is discussion based so that uh, includes the communication and collaboration as the skill then toy based or object based and everything that we are doing is joyful so every day when they come to the class there is an aha moment because they are learning something new and they are creating new knowledge so there are various strategies that have been mentioned in the uh, ncf uh, where they say that how the oral language has to develop how the wor word recognition reading and then finally writing has to be inculcated into these children and similarly for numeracy how the oral math talk skills teaching skills practice and math game have to become a part of the uh, entire Uh, curriculum so these are the various activities that we do you can see there's a lot of collaboration in the class also it is no more a sui patak sanada classroom where the teacher does not like the children talking to each other it is in fact a classroom that is full of discussions and similarly uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, focus which is there on the numeracy a lot of uh, activities that are done in order to Uh, ensure that the children are actually not rote learning but they are uh, learning through their own five senses and of course as it was said they are reflecting on it and then there is the conceptualization that is done by the teachers so um, sir was talking about the evs a lot of importance we give to the evs that becomes transdisciplinary for us so the entire primary school does the transdisciplinary curriculum where the all the subjects there are no silos there there are no subject boundaries there so through the projects children are learning the numeracy literacy they are learning the environment and the and the topics of the uh, evs actually become the transdisciplinary and they through that the other subjects are done uh, so again some of the activities that we do a lot of uh, life skills are given to the children you can see uh, a lot of uh, the focus is on the uh, growth of the children uh, the physical domain the social social domain the uh, psychomotor skills fine please motor conclude. skills are there please conclude conclude and similarly uh, creating a positive uh, classroom environment teachers uh, ensure that the children are comfortable in the class and the relationship between the teachers and the children is very comfortable and it is non threatening 
uh, Ranjana ma'am spoke about a lot of uh, subjects and uh, the scheme that is there for the classes 11th and 12th. So we give 34 subjects at the level of 11th and 12th, both at the academic level as well as the, uh, the vocational level. There are no silos there. The children are free to choose English and any other four or five subjects. The uh, I would like to bring to the notice uh, here that the uh, problem is not of the schools not uh, giving the subject combinations. The problem here is that the higher education does not accept the combinations that the children take. Our children are ready to take physics and history and uh, fine art and uh, physical education and they do that also. And they end up going to the foreign universities but if they have to go to the Delhi University and they have to do the physics honors, then they have to do physics, chemistry and maths. So the silos come from there, business studies and accounts and economics for doing the BCom honors. So once there is an integration with the higher education and they are also able to, um, you know, give the uh, flexibility to the children to give the JE exam with one science and one math, like the engineering all over the world at the undergraduate level happens with one science and one math I think that kind of flexibility when it comes then the children are going to be more uh, enthusiastic about taking these uh, combinations and uh, this Ranjana ma'am has already spoken about so uh, again when we come to the pedagogies of uh, these uh, uh, both the middle stage and the uh, secondary stage also there also we use the flipped classrooms joyful learning integrated transdisciplinary learning again toy based inquiry based so I was talking about the uh, having the entrepreneurship there so cross-cutting subjects are there that help the children learn not just about their own subject but about the other subjects as well but again the integration is very very important there and uh, assessment is also holistic we have 360 degree uh, assessment for the children the uh, progress cards that we had developed were uh, are 42 pages in fact instead of 25 pages and we assess we have the uh, peer group assessing we have the parents assessing we have the uh, teachers assessing the child and the self-assessment of the children is also there and for us uh, the assessment has to be reported in a very positive manner it is for the development of the children not judging the children uh, and uh, we have a lot of professional development programs uh, for us uh, 100 hours of training for every teacher is important we set aside 10 days, 5 days in the summer break when the children uh, go for their vacations, teachers are there uh, for 5 days, 10 hours each. Similarly, then 3 days we take out in the winter vacation and 2 days in March after the session is over. But we ensure that every uh, teacher of ours is trained for those many hours. And this is the example of the uh, lesson plans that we have created after the NCFSE has come in and we have mapped all the learning outcomes, we have mapped all the competencies and the pedagogies are defined in it, the strategies are defined in it and uh, the teachers are also observed on the uh, uh, on whether there are any deviations when they go to their uh, classroom and then they are given the feedback there is a proper process no, of discussion over, with the teachers time, as time well over, yeah so this is where i'm going to end so this is going to be available so everybody who needs to see an exemplar there's also one lesson plan for class one so uh, this is how we have implemented thank you Thank you, Dr. Jyoti Gupta, for sharing with us your innovative experiences. Our uh, national curriculum framework or national education policy is in the creation of NCRT and SCRTs. Today, we are in the Haryana SCRT ke director Sunil Bajaj. Sunil Bajaj is a very innovative teacher in the form of a very innovative teacher. And this teacher is very innovative. He is a very innovative teacher in the form of a अनूठे करते हैं उन्होंने एनसीईआरटी नीपा इग्नु जैसे प्रतिष्ठित संस्थानों के साथ काम करके इस क्षेत्र में महत्वपूर्ण योगदान दिया है तालियों के साथ सुनील बजाज जी का स्वागत करते हैं